HRC, 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 Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader, Hebrew Reader Church. Shout the child and family. We greet everybody in the name of Ahaya Ashere Ahaya. Uh, welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zakwa. And this is your brother Kasafo. Please, we do have a couple of announcements today. Uh, we do have the, the new domain for the website, uh, www.hebrewreaders.com. So we shouldn't have any problems with people finding or getting on the website any longer. Uh, Ahaya is gracious for that. Uh, that's a great uh, milestone for the church. Um, also, anyone who wants to be a member of Hebrew Readers Church, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com uh, so that we can get that started, get that process started for you. Uh, there are many perks of being a member, and we're going to uh, we'll be putting it in the emails that we send out for anyone that sends an email to us. Uh, Kasafo, you got any um, updates, anything that you wanted to say before we got started? Uh, there's some new music, you all. Be sure to check it out. Zach Wall has some Alliance Gracious uh, album. I believe it's called Ghetto Gospel. Very enjoyable. Hope That's you all it. enjoy it. We're not going to get on the oh. table. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, also with the music, it just went live today. So um, it will be on iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora. Uh, any other, probably any other platform that you could think of. Uh, so it just went live this morning. So uh, I hope be gracious. Hopefully, it'd be great for the church, be great for the for the word and the gospel. So I hope be praised. Um, without further ado, the events of World War Three. Yes, things will get hard in the world as the time of the Beast Kingdom approaches. Can you read Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 14 to 20, please? Right. Uh, Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. That's a race war. Continue, please. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the force of their actions shall stand in their power. There is no regard for government, every man for themselves. Continue, please. A man shall desire to go into a city, but shall not be able. Citizens gang together to take over turfs. Continue, please. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread, and for great tribulation. In the tribulation in America, people will have everything taken from them to the point of depression, then will come the war. Verse 20, please. Behold, saith Elohim, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east, and Lebanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that have been done to them. This is World War Three. In this war, the ten horns who will subdue the earth before the 42 months of the beast is up to have one hour of rulership with the beast. They will be the catalyst behind this war. Can you read Revelation chapter 17, verse 8, please? The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. It's an actual beast that will come out of the pit, a giant monster as described in scripture. 
and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. Unbelievers will admire him, just as they teach us to marvel at monsters in the sci-fi films. This beast is a real physical being. He's not an angel like the other kings who have ruled over the prior seven world rulerships. Can you read Revelation chapter 17, 10 and 11, please? And there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. See, he's not an angel, nor is he a great city, like the woman mystery Babylon. It's an actual beast, according to the angel. And can you read Revelation chapter 13, verse 5 to 7, please? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. The ten horns will work for him to subdue the earth. Can you read Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 to 13, please? And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. These are the angels over the original 10 members of the Western European Union. Which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. That one world government will come by the end of the 42 months for the beast to have his one hour to rule over all nations. Now we know it's the ten horns who needs this to happen so they can have their one hour with the beast. This war to take over would kick off with America and Iran initially, as we discussed before, to weaken the daughter of Babylon. And everyone will have to choose a side on the world stage. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1 and 3, and then verse 4 and 5, please? Okay, uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. The word that Ahiah spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 3. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. As we discussed before, you see the nation coming to make a desolate will inspire everyone to flee. So we know not to fret right now, but just be on the lookout for the war coming to know when it's time to go. Verse 4 and 5, please. In those days, and in that time, saith Ahiah, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping. They shall go and seek Ahiah the Elohim. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces to the wood, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to a higher and a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. As we discussed before in lessons, in the tribulations and hard times, that will bring the Israelites to repentance to seek a higher, a higher. In Jubilee chapter 23, verse 24 to 26, please. Uh, Jubilee chapter 23, verse 24. In those days, they will cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinners, the Gentiles, but none will be saved. And the heads of the children will be white with gray hair, and a child of three weeks will appear old like a man of 100 years, and their stature will be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. And in those days, the children will begin to study the laws and to seek the commandments and to return to the path of righteousness. So you see, in the times of being destroyed by tribulation and oppression, in those days, the children will begin to study the laws and to seek the commandments and return to the path of righteousness. So when everyone's fleeing to their own land and Israel is being destroyed, Israel will begin to seek the gospel. 
the remnant, the 144,000, will believe the new covenant and will grow to be found without fault before Allah I am by the end of it all. Can you read Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 20, please? 5 and 20 or 50. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. You want to make sure. <laughs> You're right. Jeremiah 50 and 20. All right. Uh, in those days and in that time, saith Ahiah, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none. And the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found. For I will pardon them whom I reserve. They'll be pardoned. So it's all former sinners being brought to repentance and clothed with the holy virgins. Can you read Revelations chapter 14, verse 4 to 5, please? These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto Allah and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile. For they are without fault before the throne of Allah. So as the war goes along, Israel will begin purged unto perfection. Oh, the great the people who have enough. You're right. Praise yeah. Allah for that, right? Yeah, that was a great precept for Jeremiah 15 and 20. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Really showed it. <laughs> no, Allah is gracious. <laughs> So as the war goes along, Israel will begin purged unto perfection. The people who have enough understanding will leave, but those who remain in Babylon will be brought to fear in the war. Can you read Jeremiah 51, verse 30, and then verse 29, please? Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 30. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might have failed. They became as women. They have burned their dwelling places. Her bars are broken. It's the highest purpose to bring the place down. So men cannot stop what's coming. Verse 29, please. And the land shall tremble in sorrow. For every purpose of a highest shall be performed against Babylon. To make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Remember. It's the ten horns behind it all, and they will fulfill the word of Allah to make it desolate without an inhabitant. Uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 16 and 17, please. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For Allah hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree. And give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of Allah shall be fulfilled. Now that's what's going to happen to America by the end of the 42 months. To subdue the earth by war. But that won't be all that happens right after Iran fights with America. There's more to this story. When Iran weakens America, then the world war will really kick off as everyone is fighting to be the next world power. Let's look at the prophecies of the wars to lead up to America being hit with nuclear fire by the Ten Horns. And what shall happen after that as well? Uh, Kasa, do you want to touch on real quick just about um, Iran coming against Babylon so that they can have scriptures before we go into it? Uh, okay. Was it already there? I didn't see it. Well, you know, I thought about there's a little short lesson, like a 30 minute video on Iran versus America. So if you hadn't seen that video, I would suggest watch that video beforehand because it all will tie in. But none, it's no hard thing to go to. Can you read Isaiah chapter 13? This one, we'll jump get down to the the, right. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones. For mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. 
the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdom of kingdoms of nations gathered together. A high of hosts musters the host of the battle. They come from a far country from the end of heaven, even Ahia. And the weapons of its indignation destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of Ahia is at hand, and it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. So this is speaking of what's going to befall Babylon. As it said, the ten horns are going to burn her with fire. It's going, people are literally going to get burnt alive by the end of the 42 months. Continue, please. Behold, the day of Ahiah cometh, full both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the consolation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. These wars, this is a world war that's coming, it's going to affect everyone. Continue, please. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of Ahia of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chase row, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. They see everyone that remains in Babylon, they're going to die. And anyone that's joined unto them, whether fighting for the military and such, they're going to die as well. The children also shall be dashed into pieces before their eyes. The houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. And that's why anyone with understanding will get out of there as that war is coming. And we'll see who is coming with the war initially. Go ahead, please. Verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. As for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. The eye shall not spare children. And this is coming to make the whole land desolate. Iran is starting it, and by the end of it, what's going to happen? Verse 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, the excellency, shall be as when Elohim overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. There, I think that helps relay what's going to happen. Now, we're going to jump into the scriptures to see the events to lead up to that end of Babylon. We see the Medes are going to be stirred up to come against her. There's no regard for human life when they come, and they can't be bought with silver or gold. And now we're going into the wars to see how it will end up with the place being desolate and what will happen after. Thanks for that, Zach. Well, yeah, I just Let me touch on something. The, uh, the Medes, they come from the second kingdom of the four beasts of Daniel. They're the second kingdom, the Persian Medo Empire. And today is the area of Iran. So that everybody can understand. Thank you. Sure. Now let's jump in to see. So we're picking up, say this, we're visualizing the war to come. Iran weakens America. Everybody's going to be scrambling to be the next world power. Let's go to the prophecies to see what's coming after. Can you read Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 28 to 44, please? Uh, second Ezra chapter 15, verse 28. Behold, an horrible vision and the appearance thereof from the east. 
this world war to come, after Iran takes down America as the world power, there will be quite a war in the East after. Continue, please. Where the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots, and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth, that all they which hear them may fear and tremble. The Arabians, which are the Ishmaelites with the children of Keturah, will come to fight against Iran after they weaken America. Islamic religion is preparing them for it, since they believe when America falls, the Muslims, whose origin is in Arabia, will be the next world power, yet is just an unsound doctrine leading them to fulfill true prophecy. Continue, please. Also, the Carmanians, raging and wrath, shall go forth at the wild boars of the wood. Armenians are the people out of the Iranians. The city of Kerman in Iran used to be called Carmania. Continue, please. And with great power shall they come and join battle with them. There you see the next major war to come is between Iran and Arabia after Iran takes down America. Continue, please. So that's interesting. So the... um. The two sects of Muslim are going to come together, the Shia and Sunni. So they're going to come together hmm. and shall waste a portion of land of the Assyrians. They'll be fighting in the east as the vision declared. And the land of Assyria will definitely be a place of battle where some of it will be destroyed by the war. Continue, please. And then shall the dragons have the upper hand, remembering their nature. The nature of Ishmael is to be a wild man, according to Genesis chapter 16, verse 12, and that will prosper him in this war. Continue, please. And if they shall turn themselves, conspiring together in great power to persecute them. Do you know what that means? It's literally just speaking on them, um, remembering their nature. It said, and if they shall turn themselves, so they're literally changing back to how they were. Conspiring together mm -hmm. in great power to persecute them. So anybody that stands in the way is gone. You're going to get persecuted. Oh, uh, okay. So they're turning up, basically. Right. All right. All right. That makes sense now. Okay. The dragons of Arabia, Ishmael remembers his nature and gets worked up to persecute whoever's in his way. Continue verse 32. Then these shall be troubled and keep silence through their power and shall flee. The Arabians will subdue Iran and Iran shall flee from them in the war. Now, see, that's what lets us know what's going to happen next. Arabia is going to overcome Iran. Now, just when the Iranians will think they've won it all and will be the next world power as their Islamic prophecies protest, then the enemy will come and disappoint their hopes, showing their prophecies to be untrue. Can you read verse 33, please? And from the land of the Assyrians shall the enemy besiege them and consume some of them. And in their hosts shall be fear and dread and strife among the kings. So as soon as the Arabians think they are on top, the enemy will come from the land of Assyria and take them down from their hopes and Ishmael being a wild man, they'll start striving amongst themselves and their own rulers. So we see the things that will be going down in the Middle East. Can you read verse 34, please? Behold clouds from the east and from the north unto the south. And they are very horrible to look upon, full of wrath and storm. They shall Continue. smite one upon another. And they shall smite down a great multitude of stars upon the earth, even their own star. These are angels fighting amongst each other. That war between them will manifest in the physical with many men dying in World War III. Continue, please. And blood shall be from the sword unto the belly, and dung of men unto the camel's hawk. And there shall be great fearfulness and trembling upon the earth. And they that see the wrath shall be afraid, and trembling shall come upon them. 
And then shall there come great storms from the south and from the north and another part from the west. And strong winds shall arise from the east and shall open it. And the cloud which he raised up in wrath and the star stirred to cause fear toward the east and west wind shall be destroyed. The great and mighty clouds shall be puffed up full of wrath and the star that they may make all the earth afraid and them that dwell therein and they shall pour out over every high and eminent place and horrible star, fire and hail and flying swords and many waters, that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. And they shall break down the cities and walls, mountains and hills, trees of the wood and grass of the meadows and their corn. And they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. After the enemy has taken down Arabia, the horrible star and the clouds of wrath will go to Babylon that was already destroyed by Iran to finish the job by the end of the 42 months. Continue, please. Verse 44, 2nd Ezra chapter 15. They shall come to her and besiege her. The star and all wrath shall they pour out upon her. Then shall the dust and smoke go up unto heaven. And all they that be about her shall bewail her. The dust and smoke all come from the ten horns, burning her with nuclear fire, and she shall be bewailed. So hopefully you see what Ezra was shown was talking about what's going to end up coming upon America as Revelations talks about. Can you read Revelations chapter 17, verse 16, please? And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. What was shown to Ezra is confirmed in Revelations, that it's going up in dust and smoke and her being bewailed. Can you read Revelation chapter 18, verse 8 to 10, please? Therefore shall her place come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire, for strong is the Lord Elohim who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour, if thy judgment come. Then after America is burnt with fire, the nations who are under America's power shall serve the enemy. Can you read 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 45 to 63, please? All right. 2nd uh, Ezra chapter 15, verse 45. And they that remain under her shall do service unto them that have put her in fear. After that, China will seek to take power for herself by trying to be like America. Continue verse 46, please. And thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person, woe be unto thee, thou wretch, because thou hast made thyself like unto her, and hast decked thy daughters with whoredom, that they might please and glory in thy lovers which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Over in Asia, it's well known that prostitution of women is big business and also used especially to please people in business ventures. Continue, please. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works and inventions. China followed America in all its folly, modeling themselves after her. Therefore said Elohim, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence, to waste thy houses with destruction and death. And the glory of thy power shall be dried up as a flower, the heat shall arise that is sent over thee. Thou shalt be weakened as a poor woman with stripes, and as one chastised with wounds, so that the mighty and lovers 
shall not be able to receive thee. What I with jealousy have so proceeded against thee, saith the Lord, if thou hadst not always slain my chosen, exalting the stroke of thy hands, and saying over their dead, when thou wast drunken, set forth the beauty of thy countenance. The reward of thy whoredom shall be in thy bosom, therefore shalt thou receive recompense. Like as thou hast done unto my chosen, saith the Lord, even so shall Allah do unto thee, and shall deliver thee into mischief. Thy children shall die of hunger, and thou shalt fall through the sword. Thy city shall be broken down, and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. They that be in the mountain shall die of hunger, and eat their own flesh, and drink their own blood, for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. China is God, known for their great mountains, and those who dwell up in them will pass away of famine. Continue, please. Thou as unhappy shall come through the sea and receive plagues again. And in the passage they shall rush on the idle city, and shall destroy some portions of thy land, and consume part of thy glory, and shall return to Babylon that was destroyed. Where it says, and shall return to Babylon that was destroyed, that's showing that the ten horns, after destroying some of China, they'll return to the ways of the daughter of Babylon that they had just destroyed literally by fire continue please and thou shalt be cast down by them as stubble and they shall be unto thee as fire and shall consume thee in thy cities thy land and thy mountains all thy woods and thy fruitful trees shall they burn up with fire the ten horns will hit china with nuclear fire too continue please thy children shall they carry away captive and look what thou hast, they shall spoil it, and mar the beauty of thy face. So that's what's to come here in this final war war, to bring everything in subjection unto the beast, to have his one hour. But just a recap, America is going to get brought down by Iran. Iran is going to think they have the upper hand. Then Arabia is going to be lifted up to come fight against them. And Arabia, Ishmael, remembering that he's the wild man, he's going to subdue the Iranians, and the Iranians will flee. And then when Arabia thinks they have the world power and their prophecies are being fulfilled, then comes the enemy from the land of Assyria over where the war is in the Middle East to take them down. And then when they take them down, you have the angelic war that you're seeing happening, being manifested in a physical warfare of people dying. There's going to be a horrible star and these clouds go into America. After Arabia is taken down, they're going to go burn America with fire. And when America is burned with fire, here comes Asia, Gog, known to us as China, seeking to take power. And then the Ten Horns are going to burn her with fire as well and destroy part of her land. And the world will be subdued under the Ten Horns to give their power unto the beast. In the tribulation and war of wars, the sinners will die. Can you read 2 Ezra chapter 15, verse 21 to 24, please? Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also. And recompense in their bosom, thus saith the Lord Elohim. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that share innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is going forth from his wrath, and hath consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners, like the straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin, and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Here we see faith alone won't save us, because we are supposed to show our faith by keeping the commandments. Can you read James chapter 2, verse 24, please? You see then... How that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Romans chapter 2 verse 13, to confirm it with Paul. For not the hearers of the law are just before Allah, but the doers of the law shall be justified. 
verse 12 of Romans chapter 2. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. This is what is to come. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 25 to 27, please. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children. From the power, defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. And therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction. Through scripture, the people that die in the wars are sinners. But the good and righteous martyrs will die at the hands of the false prophet who will come after the 42 months of the beast, according to Apocalypse of Peter. So remember, you want to remain alive until he actually gets there to die at his hands. Don't think staying in America to get killed in the race war and the war with Iran will make you a righteous martyr. There's no scripture that we have come across about these end times to confirm that good martyrs will be anyone besides those who die at the hands of the false prophet. Can you read second at just 15 and 27, please? For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth and shall remain in them. For Allah shall not deliver you because you have sinned against him. So there we see that we are going to remain in the plagues and we won't be delivered if we've sinned against him. Once the beast and the ten horns get their one hour to rule, the devil in the form of the false prophet will come to take over after the 42 months are up at some point, and he will continue his rule up until the 1331st day. Can you Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, please? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake of the dragon. All right, Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2 to 9, please. Uh, Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. And after it hath been brought to completion, Belial would descend, the great angel, the king of this world, who hath ruled ever since it existed. He would descend from his firmament in the form of a man, a king of iniquity, a murderer of his mother. This is the king of this world will persecute the plant which the twelve apostles of the beloved have planted. Some of the twelve will be given into his hand. This angel Belial will come in the form of that king, and with him will come all the powers of this world, and they will obey him in every wish. By his word will he cause the sun to rise by night, and the moon also he will make to appear in the sixth hour. And he will do everything he wishes in the world. He will act and speak like the beloved and will say, I am the Lord. And before me there was no one. And all men in the world will believe him. And they will sacrifice to him and will serve him saying, This is the Lord and besides him there is no other. And the majority of those who are associated together to receive the beloved, he will turn aside after him. Let's confirm that not everyone will turn aside after him, but some will become righteous martyrs at his hands. Uh, Paco Peter chapter 2. This is a part of that chapter, please. Okay. Hast thou not understood that the fig tree is the house of Israel? Verily I say unto thee, when the twigs thereof have sprouted forth in the last days, then shall fame Christ come and awake expectation, saying, I am the Christ. I am now come into the world, and when they, Israel, shall perceive the wickedness of their deeds, they shall turn away after them and deny him, whom our fathers did praise, even the first Christ, whom they crucified, and therein sinned a great sin. But this deceiver is not the Christ, and when they reject him, he shall slay with the sword, and there shall be many martyrs. Then shall the twigs of the fig tree that is, the house of Israel, shoot forth. Many shall become martyrs at his hands. Enoch and Elias shall be sent to teach them that this is the deceiver which must come into the world and do signs and wonders to deceive. And therefore shall they that die by his hands be martyrs, and shall be reckoned among the good and righteous martyrs who have pleased Allah in their life. These are the things to come before Christ makes his second return because the devil 
will do all this within 1331 days. Then, after the 1332nd day, Christ will come at some point. Can you read Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 12 to 14, please? All right. Ascension of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 12. And he will rule for three years and seven months and 27 days. That's 1331 days according to the holy calendar in scripture. Continue, please. And many faithful and saints, when they saw him for whom they were hoping, who was crucified, Yahweh, the Lord Christ. After that, I, Isaiah, had seen him who was crucified and ascended, and who believed in him. Of these few will be left in those days as his servants, while they flee from desert to desert as they await his coming. The righteous will have fled out of society after the 1260th day of preaching to get to the wilderness. Continue, please. And after 1,332 days, the Lord will come with his angels and with the hosts of the saints from the seventh heaven, with the glory of the seventh heaven. And he will drag Belier and its hosts also into Gehenna. There we see Christ won't come until after the war and the events of the false prophet. These are the wars that must come to pass. And hopefully that helps for understanding the world war to come. Anything else, Aqua? No, it's just a lot of events going on. So like, like any war, there's, there's multiple battles in a war. So going through the scriptures, we got to see the multiple battles of, of the war itself. So um, it's interesting to have a heads up behind gracious. We're sorry for um, not being able to come on live today. This would have been a great lesson to come on live, seeing that I know people are going to have questions. Um, please write questions in the chat. Or send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com, and we'll gladly clarify or rectify anything for understanding. Um, so please um, do that, if you will. Anybody new that's watching the channel, please uh, check out our, e our uh, website www.hebrewreaders.com um, send us an email uh, whatever you feel comfortable doing and please just continue to follow and watch the videos if nothing else if not even connecting with us watch the videos get the information that's a great milestone stepping stone for us anyway so May Ahaya be praised and may he continue to bless the work of our hands and allow us to do all things for edification and for truth. Uh, with that being said, love you guys. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat day. Hope you have a wonderful week coming up. And Ahaya protect you all. Uh, anything you want to say, Casa, before we get off? Let's be with you. <laughs> Shabbat to Talon family. Peace. HRC, 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 HRC,